You must not understand the power of black femininity. Boy, this movie will be shut down. Hello, knockouts. Tanya TKO here, and I am a self-love specialist from TanyaTKO.com. I hope you learn how to love yourself and each other. On this channel, we use viral videos as teachable moments for dating, relationships, self-love in our own lives. And today, we're going to be watching and doing a reaction review of the trailer loquisha and if it looks and if in my face it looks like i'm already over it it's because i am you won't believe what it is that i'm about to show you i'm going to show you a few different videos i did some digging into this man oh god i just you know what i'll just i'll play the trailer for you and then we'll have a conversation so stay tuned for that basically the trailer of loquisha is about this caucasian male who needs to make a lot of money but he can't make it as a white guy so he has to pretend to be a black woman in order to be able to make it i'm already feeling upset so viewer discretion may be advised i don't know what it is that i'm going to say in this video because i'm, I'm irritated by this as well as some of the responses that i've seen to this you will, i'm telling you you won't believe this so listen i need to tell you all first off the bat because i sell this vitamin e once a year this is a lot of you like to compliment my skin i'll put on a little bit of this for you <laughs> Because I, I do not have on, I don't have on foundation. I put concealer on under my eye, but, or under my eyes. But I want you all to be able to have naturally beautiful glowing skin with that melanin popping. No matter how much melanin you have. <laughs> so look at, I mean, let me just make sure that my conceal. okay. So this is what I want for you all. I want you all to be able to go outside, go somewhere. Like, you know, people ask me, how is it that I'm able to make videos without makeup on or with my belly not looking completely flat, etc. And as you know, I am a self-love specialist. My book just came out and you can't, the title is gold, so you can't really see it. But this is the Self-Love Affirmations Journal. And you all know that I've been through some things. And when I was living in my car and I was in some of the roughest times that I've ever been in, you know, a lot of those insecurities creep in. A lot of us have received a lot of negative reinforcement throughout our lives. And it was the reinforcements, these affirmations. As you know, I became a certified clinical hypnotherapist. And these are the affirmations that I use to get out of my situation and turn everything around and really dive fully deeply into self-love. Now, I know that we all love ourselves. However, if you want to get to that next level, you're going to have to combat that negative self-talk and rewrite that subconscious programming. So on that note, let's jump right into this video. I am... I'm already perturbed. Let's 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 get it started. Let's get it started. You ready? I'm I'm ready. Let's guess as ready as I'm gonna be. <sighs> you always seem to say the right thing to just the right person. What's your secret? I'm really just talking to myself. I don't charge for my advice. Well, you should, because it was amazing. I saw this and I thought of you. You will be a hit in no time. Welcome to the Joe Show. I submitted myself to a radio station for my own show. Well, congratulations. They rejected me. Well, what congratulations, then? You weren't right for your own show? Jason skipped it. We need to get the money for this school. 13000 a semester? That's who needs their own show. If I was a black woman, I'd be perfect. Uh, She's brilliant. I know. Get her in here. The biggest thing in radio, but I still need my anonymity. You know this? It's not a crime. It's theater. You love with Loquisha. Count the kids! No problem. Hi, Loquisha. It's free. Oh, I ain't talking to you, not the way you sound. Next caller. You go, girl. Will you just be good to her. If you good to yourself, you can be good to others. But don't be too good, because the police will come around. Yeah. Where did you get this? I got another job. Doing what? Consulting work. What the hell would you know about being a white guy anyway? I know quite a bit. Loquisha is a real role model for every African American woman on this planet. Loquisha! Like the whole city has a Quisha mania. I am Loquisha. 
please, your officer. What was that? I think I might be a black woman trapped in a white man's body. You need to talk to Lucretia. Just because she's a woman and a black person doesn't mean that she doesn't understand you. Is this really happening? I'm on a bridge above the river, and I'm gonna jump. But thanks for calling. Enjoy your jump. I gotta start listening to her. This is so irritating. I almost lost it a few times during this trailer. You know what? I'm sorry. I just... You know what? Before I jump into my video, let me play another video for you of some white men reacting to Loquisha. I just... This is unnerving. Give me one moment. I know. Get her in. The week gonna be the biggest thing in radio. <laughs> but I still need my anonymity. You nervous? There it is. Oh, okay. <laughs> what the hell is that? I'll tell. I'll tell you what this. Oh my. I'll tell you God. what this is. So no, no. Finally. A movie yeah. about a white guy getting a chance. <laughs> one music thing. track playing yeah. through the whole thing. I now have an answer. I said this on Twitter earlier. I Holy. go, I now have an answer for what my most highly anticipated movie of the year is. People are going to be like, hey, man, what are you looking most forward to? Is it Godzilla? No, nah, dude. What about uh, Spider-Man? No. Nah. New Tarantino movie? No. Nah. Well, then what then? Dude, just watch this. Yeah. <laughs> and it's... Like, like who... Who... Th who ha who? A G ha, your answer who? to all of that ah. is a genius. <laughs> it's. I looked up. I go like, who made this movie? The guy who's the lead. A, a, he's a comedian. A, yeah. Jeremy Savile, I believe, yeah. is his name. It, he's also the writer and director of this film. Okay. And uh, so uh, this has because you can tell by looking at the trailer where it's like, no matter what people are saying about it, the fact that that is trending yeah. has got to be. Good news for everyone who made that. Yeah. I can't wait for this movie. Wow. I can't wait for this movie. Yeah, and yeah. I loved looking at how this thing was trending on Twitter. <laughs> because like, I got several people sending me this trailer. I just, I can't. I can't. Okay. You know what? There's so much I want to say about this movie. There's so much I want to say about it. Let's just jump into it. There's just so many thoughts twirling through my mind. Like, because I was curious. I wanted to see how Caucasians were responding to this. Because I'm like, surely people see that this is a problem, right? They're laughing. They're talking about the production quality, how it looks low budget. None of the, the socio-political stuff. None of the political incorrectness. None of the culture vulturism. None of the subjecting, demeaning, and dehumanizing women, a race of women, none of that inside of the commentary. I even listened to The Breakfast Club. I'm not providing a clip for that because see the G, his voice irritates my spirit and I don't want to play that inside of my video. But basically on The Breakfast Club, they were talking about this and so many of the callers that were calling in, male callers and even a few female callers, but for the vast majority, male ignorant people talking about, oh, how this is like white chicks. Oh, this is like um, uh, the, the black Klansmen. No. There's a political term called punching up or punching down, right? There's nobody out there that can say that socially, economically, and politically speaking, that white men are beneath black women. So that mocking black women is punching up to them. No, 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 no. There's a difference between punching up or the elite looking down to, to subject, objectify, and demean, demoralize those that are beneath them. You know what? The basic premise... The basic premise, thank God I didn't have on makeup, I didn't have wiped it all off. <laughs> the basic premise of this is that, oh, 
He can't make it. He can't make it as a white man. All powerful in this country. He can't make it. But oh, if only he were a minority. Because you know, minorities got all the jobs. They got all the money. Oh, minorities, they got the opportunities. So if only I, John Q. White man, if only I were a sassy, big, fat black woman, then all of a sudden, all of my problems in this country would go away. And then not only that, the irony or the irony of it is that he's wanting to pay for his white child's $13,000 a semester. We're talking about $26,000 a year. $26,000 a year for his child to go to school. If only he were a black woman, then he'd be able to pay for it. Let's talk about the numbers. Look, look, I eat them. Sorry, I'm sorry. Let me calm down. Let me calm down. Let me calm down. Let's look at the numbers. Let's look at the numbers. Okay. The median wealth by race. The average Caucasian family, the median wealth is $134,000 per year. You want to know what the median wealth for the average black family is? 11000 This is a family we're talking about, not an individual, a family. And a lot of this is largely due to redlining, the, the Jim Crow terrorism in this country, 400 years of economic oppression. Oh, but if only he were a minority. And then let's talk about black women. Let's talk about black women. Let's look, let's look at what and who is making what in this country. So when we look at the, the income disparity in this country, a white woman now, remember it was the, the white women were at 71 cents on the dollar. Now white women have gone up to 82% of black, oh, of, I'm sorry, I'm so excited. White women have gone up to 82% of a white man's salary. You want to know what black women's salary is compared to white men? 67 cents, 67.7 cents on the dollar. That's it, right there, right there. 67.7 cents on the dollar. But if only he were a black woman. And then not only that, that money's flowing out of the community because as you see from the numbers, we don't own the vast majority of us don't own our homes. We're relegated into the ghettos. So this is what it is that I'm hearing, and correct me if I'm wrong. Let me see if you're hearing the same thing too, right? So you as a black person, you make it through, you make it through the economic social and political oppression and persecution in this country. You are redlined and relegated into the ghetto. As a black girl, you are 40% of you will be molested in that home before you reach the age of 18. On average, 40% right? You go from there, you have the type of parents that would name you Loquisha in the first place, and then you're big, fat, and black, and all of a sudden, you got all the opportunities. I wonder why, I wonder why he didn't, when he went on to, to do this show, why couldn't he be a well-spoken, sophisticated black woman? It's like this is his interpretation of what a black woman is. He deepened his voice, Listen to what me say. The man deepened his voice to play a black woman. Listen. He deepened his voice. He deepened his already deep with testosterone man voice in order to play a black woman. Are you kidding me? Are you serious? You must eat drunk. A joke you must eat milk. And then not only that, peep. Peep, peep how there was a feminine sounding bubbly woman who came on the line. I need some advice, Laquisha. Oh no, girl, you're not, not talking, not sounding like that. Oh, because this big, hideous bufferilla of a black woman can't even stand femininity coming near her, that she must rebuke it. Not only that, the pain. A person talking about getting ready to jump off the bridge. Well, enjoy your jump! Really? This is what's going to make it on the radio? Show me. I, I beckon you to show me. Show me one big, fat, black, loud, rambunctious black woman who is winning. Show me one. Show me. Show me. 
show me one. We got Tiffany Haddish, you know, on the Breakfast Club. They were saying, oh, they, 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 they should have had a black woman behind us. We got Tiffany Haddish, who is loud and rambunctious, and people have an issue with the caricature that she plays. Now, here we have this white man. They have everything in this country. Everything. They have everything. From politics to social power, social structure to economics, they have everything in this country. And then, tell me if you peep this, then, 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 in the one instance, so first of all, I told you, show me a big fat black woman, who a one who was born a woman, born female. Who is out there with that, her, 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 that, 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 show me one. We got, we got Lonnie Love on, um, on the reel, but as you see, she's not like that. We had, we have, um, on, on the, the talk, we had Sherry Shepard. We have, we have, we have bigger black women, but you don't see none of them being afforded the ability to have Negroid features. We're talking Negroid nose, Negroid lips, and dark skin. They're not afforded the ability to be big, bossy. You got to be cute like Tiffany Haddish and you want to do, do your caricature. So nonetheless, so nonetheless, right? I was going to say, God, I lost my train of thought. I'll probably have to put it in the comments because, oh, this is what I was going to say. I, I, I'm it, Jump back into my mind, right? Listen, listen to this. Tell me if you peep this too, the privilege. Oh, he can't make it as a white man. They have every, 67% of the population is white. 13% is black. They have everything in this country. And then in the one, one instance where a, where a black female was able to escape from all of the, the, the impoverishedness, the downtroddenness, the beat down, the molestation, the rape, the this, the that, the social economic beat down in the, in the police beat down in the political beat down in this country. She makes it to become an adult. And then the one opportunity that she has, this white man feels that it is his, it is his duty and privilege to be able to abscond that opportunity from her too, so that the black woman couldn't even get a job. Not only that, when he takes the job, what does he do? He plays the character. <sighs> he plays the caricature of a black woman, some big, black, obnoxious, low vibrating female, toxic, who would tell a person to jump off a bridge and they think that this is funny. So he feels that he's entitled to all of the jobs afforded to white men too. And then come down into the ghetto to take what the black woman could have gotten as well. Really, sir? Really? I'm curious as to why didn't he play a redneck white woman? Why didn't he play, like you, honey boo boo made it big, her and her dysfunctional family. Why didn't he play a mama June? Hmm? Why did he have to descend down from his whiteness? to depict black women in this super masculinized, devoid of femininity, overly testosterone filled, ignorant, rambunctious, obnoxious, low vibrating. Why did he have to play it that way? Huh? I'm curious, I'm curious. Why couldn't he play a redneck white man? People love ignorance so much. Why is it that he's descending from his ivory tower to come wallow down in the mud to depict the caricature of a big fat black woman? As if these women are winning. As if they're winning. Show me, show me the example of one here in the United States. You know what? But I found a video of his. Take a listen to this. I found a video of his. I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this. Where'd you get that bun, man? You're really naked. I'm cold. Hey, brother. That mustard looks delicious, too. Come on. Help a brother out. Share your bun. 
What is wrong with you, man? Did I get the bun? No, man. I just got put in the grill. Where I got this terrible burn. I'm done. I'm done. I don't even, I don't want to force you to listen to the rest of that. So this man has a shtick. He has a shtick. Ah. Come on, help a brother out. Who do you think he's imitating with this? Help a brother out? Really? That's how you talk now in the Jewish community? That's how you like, hey, brother man, help a brother out with your bun, baby. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. I find this, I find this highly offensive. But this is his shtick because he's unoriginal. He's unoriginal. Take a look at this man. His name is Jeremy. What is it? Jeremy Seville. Jeremy Seville. Look. Take a look at him. Take a look. Good look. This is his impression of Loquisha. Mm, mm, mm. And then look at the black woman in front of him. When we talk about self love, listen. Because I, I, I know the people from this movie are going to be watching reviews on 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 YouTube. Come. Get yourself a copy of my self-love affirmations book to any black person who took a to, took part in this buffoonery. Please come get your copy. Contact me. I just because there's something lacking inside of you that you would aid and abet this white man in demeaning us in this way. And any person out there, listen, oh, you know what? I got time today. Come comment below. I'm going to make the time today, and I don't mind doing follow-up videos. Anybody who thinks that this is all right, write why you think this is all right below. I'll make time. I mean, as long as you're not a troll and you have an intelligent discourse, I'll make time for you because I will explain to you why this is so problematic. Representation matters. When I was a child, they had out films like Tarzan where they had Negroes in there acting the goddamn fool, dressed up in the Ooga Booga outfits and w running around, Ooga Booga, Ooga, acting like pure plum fools out there. I was embarrassed as a child. I was embarrassed. As a child, I was like, is this what I'm relegated towards? Ooga Booga in. I see people who are of class and, 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 and distinguishedness and they have light skin. Whether they're black or otherwise, they have lighter complected skin, straighter hair, narrow nose, angular jaws, and thin lips. That's what I saw. But then the people who had the Negroid features like me, they were ooga booga in in some straw skirts, acting like buffoons. Even in the jungle, Tarzan was more classy than the fools that were running around in their grass skirts. Because this is the way that they wanted to depict us so that young black children could see so that they could hypnotize. You know, I'm a certified clinical hypnotherapist. Listen to what it is that I'm saying. You think that these people don't know? You think that they don't know? This is the trope that they want to push out there so that young black children can see this and become hypnotized and be like, that's what I'm relegated towards. So that other white men can see this and be like, yeah, you know what? Yeah. Didn't they make a book about that? Who stole my cheese? And it's like, okay, who stole my cheese? That they, they running around the economic policies that they created to create crony capitalism in this country. The same policy that these white men made to benefit them when now all the money is flowing upward. Look at, look at, look at the median income. Look at the, the average wealth. Look at the average wealth. 678000 for 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 um for for white households 95,000 for the black and this is skewed by people like Jeff Bezos and these people where all the money is flowing upward and then the average white man is not able to hold his own anymore then he's like who stole my cheese and instead of looking upward at the policy that he created of other white men who were taking all the money and absconding it themselves they're looking down punching down at the persons who are making 67 cents on the dollar of a white man's dollar. Really? Black women stole your cheese, man? We, the most underrepresented, the most abused, the most dejected, the least protected people in society stole your cheese, man? So that when you go out there looking for a job, now you have to take one from the black woman because she took what you should have had. This is a trope that is that is that is purported by racists. I'm not saying that this man is a racist, but obviously he's very racially ignorant. You know what? Let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at this. He came out 
Listen to what this buffoon did. Look at how he came out. He came out posing with Marlon Wayans talking about Loquisha movie, meet white chicks. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thanks for all you do. Keep laughing and loving. He doesn't get it. He posed with Marlon Wayne. Look at Marlon. He's on the microphone and look at this penis sucker standing next to him, just looking like he just, he just, he, he just needs to be. He, oh, 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 look at him. Look at him. I'm trying to get up underneath this man with his face. Look at him. Marlon Wayne looks surprised. He's like, I don't, who are you? Away from me. Away from me. And here he is trying to be all up on him. And Marlon Wayne's corrected that with the quickness. Listen to what Marlon said. Listen, listen. I hate when people tag me in their bull S. It's annoying as F. I bet it is. So Marlon let him know that he was not co-signing that at all. At all. At all. And you know what? I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to get out of this video in just a little while, but I have two more points to make. I have two more points to make. Listen to this, right? I'm about to spill your secrets, white men. I'm about to spill your secrets. I'm about to spill them. Look, before I became Tanya TKO, I was on, I was on this advice. I, I, I was an advice line person over the telephone on this 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 on this website it was I was doing giving telephone advice right and the number one so white men called me all the, all day all night long asking questions do you want to know what the number one question was that they asked you want to know what the number one question was that they asked they wanted to know was the myth really true about black men's penises they were obsessed I would say 96% of the phone calls that I received, the only question that they wanted to know was whether or not black men's penises were really as big as everyone says. They were obsessed, obsessed with it. I was like, it just, it got to the point that I was like, ugh, this, it was just too much. But that was the question that they wanted to know over and over and over again. You know how men have this, this, this obsession with their penises anyway? White men have this enormous obsession with black men's penises. And now this, now this, first of all, black black people have been getting mocked by white men for for a, at least a century in this country. With the with the black face and walking around doing their shiftless, hey Miss Mary, let's you do with their face painted black and their lips painted white, trying to make a mockery. It's like, how much more do you need? How much more do you need? You got a 400 head, 400 year head start. You had the Jim Crow, you had the red lining, you had all of these things. How much more did you need that you still have to debase and demoralize black people on top of that? So that you have to walk around depicting black people in, in, in this, just in this mocking way. I'm going to go rape me a white woman. I'm a rapist. So mocking, mocking, mocking us for centuries, right? And then this obsession with black male penis. Now this obsession with black women. And I think I know exactly what it is. I think I know exactly what it is. Because I'm not sure if you could tell where the phone calls went how the phone calls on this, on the site went. They first started asking, oh, is it true? Is it true? Then they started one going to confessing, oh, how they want to suck one, how they want to take one because it's so big and they want to bow down to the mighty power of it. And this man right here is no, no, he is no exception. Look at him. He looked just like I did when I saw that video of Safari. Take a look. The, the, the similarities are right there. Take a look. And so now he knows that, I mean, look at him. Take a look, take a look at him. Take a look at him. When he, oh, I'm, a, I'm a, a black woman stuck in a white man's body. Why? Why? Because he knows that that's probably the only way that he could go get himself some black penis himself to go penetrate up into his white body, huh? It's like, you know what? Listen, I'm not giving you a pass. I'm going to, do, I'm, I am delving your secrets right now. You think that we don't know. I know. I know. I know. Because I traversed through that life and I saw and I heard and I witnessed men just like him talking about how they wish, how they wish they could be bent over 
how they wish. This is what a lot of this is all about, the redlining and the trying to keep people down and trying to keep people back. Because they feel this insecurity on the inside because they don't feel that there's anything about them of value. As long as there are other men out there walking around with penises bigger than theirs, they're like, why would any woman want to be with me? They're like, hell, why would I want to be with me? I want to take one of those big black ones too. You think I'm joking? Ask around. You think it's a joke? Me a neck no joker. Ask around. Ask around. So there he is, the black woman trapped in a white man's body because that's an, and not even, not any type of black woman either. Big, bufferilla type black woman. So that he could go get that thug loving, shoving up into him. I just I don't understand. I just don't understand this. I'm going to play one last video for you and then we're going to get out of here. Take a look at this. I want you all to see this. There is growing anger over a young woman heading back home during the polar vortex after her car was impounded by police. Walk in the cold by Felicia. The video, apparently taken by a cop's cell phone, was posted on Snapchat. Look at the racially provocative title, What Black Girl Magic Looks Like, and this, celebrating Black History Month. The young woman was pulled over initially for an expired registration. The temperature that night in Detroit was 2 degrees, minus 18 degrees with the wind chill. Priceless. I was upset. It's crazy. WDIV-TV spoke to 23-year-old Arielle Moore, the woman seen in the video. I was a call for. I mean, it hurt me. Detroit Police Chief James Craig. I'm angry because this was a racially insensitive post. It has by Felicia, and that's derogatory. By Felicia is a dismissive way of Just saying here. goodbye. The officer who shot the video has been demoted. I called uh, the mother personally. I expressed how concerned I was on how her daughter was treated. Chief Craig says Ariel was asked if she wanted an escort to her home, which was just a block away, but she declined. The chief later saw to it that her impounded car was returned. Meanwhile, the polar vortex blasting America is showing signs of weakening, finally. Okay. In New York, a Coast Guard. So this happened a few months ago. Why? 23 years old. 23. And these police officers, big grown adults, stewards of the people, hired to be the ones to serve and protect, mocking her. This is what black girl magic looks like. You think that they don't know? You think that they don't know what it is that they're doing? You think that they don't know that they're subject, subjugating an already oppressed class of citizens? You think that they don't know? And for some reason they wanna mock it, oh, Black History Month? Also, I guess this happened a few months ago, right? Right this past winter, Black History Month. Here they go, mocking a young black girl, obviously in some sort of financial distress if her if her registration expired and all this other stuff. And it took the black male police commissioner or authority, whomever he is, to get that girl's car out of impound, to demote those guys and show empathy. Only reason that they knew about it is because it was it was filmed and placed online. What about all of the other stops ending like this in racial provocation where people feel where these white officers feel this feeling fibrillating inside of them with envy and disgust because they wish that they could be a black woman. They wish. Listen, you know what? Jeremy Seville, he has not earned the right he's not earned the ability to be able to claim to be able to purport this black girl magic he has not he is not that man is weak he is weak he cannot see through what many of us black women you want to talk about where this magic came from this magic comes from overcoming the magic comes from the creativity of how to navigate around through this world and come out on the other side shining look at me shining. Listen to what it is that I'm saying. He is not as strong as I am. That is why he had to deepen his own voice to try to match a voice like mine. That his inadequate male voice, he had to go deepen down into his Adam's apple to be able to try to match the natural tonation of mine. He's not as strong as I am. He could not have made it through the things that I've made it through. 
and come out on the other side shining. Look at me, melanin popping. He couldn't come out on the other side like I have. He's weak and he lacks the creativity to be able to ride on his own wings. And the saddest part about it is that he has other people supporting him and, and pouring money into this stupid movie this denigrating movie. And then these other reviewers talking about people gonna see this, no, you must not understand the power of black femininity. Boy, this movie will be shut down. This movie will flop. Listen to my words, rest assured, we will shut this down. Listen to what it is that I'm saying. They've been trying to hold us back for so long but they don't understand that we are mothers of all life here on this earth. All human life here on this earth is the black womb men. And our creativity is unbound. Look at how they've been trying to hold us back. They give us scraps, the, the, the throwback, the wash, the fat back that they don't want. And look at what we did. We turned it into a cuisine of which the likes they could never repeat. So then they gentrify into our neighborhoods and try to take over the restaurants themselves because they could never, they could never. Look at what it is that you give us. You give us 33 years, we make it look like 23. You give us 200 pounds, we make it look like 150. Listen to what it is that I'm saying. They cannot be like us. They can't. Being black is a magical thing, I will tell you that much. And then I'm gonna get out of this video. I am happy and proud to be black. When I think about the creativity that arises, listen, this world cannot continue without creativity. And the vast majority of what these people have gotten, they have gotten through pilfering, robbery, absconding it from others, subjugating others, enacting their violence upon others, and taking as their own. I no longer listen to these songs from the 60s and think that these people really made it. I have not seen not one dance created by a Caucasian, not one, not one. In the past 100, 150 years, what dance has come out of this community? When we look at all of the inventions and all of these things that arose out of out of the industrial revolution and all of these people who had black assistants and then all of a sudden these amazing ideas came to them. Meanwhile, you see memoirs of black people whose ideas were robbed, dances robbed, songs robbed, singing, please. Singing and their songs robbed and placed with white faces on top. And then when they couldn't get away with that any longer, they took a person like Elvis and took him and had him mimic what it is. Where is the creativity? This is what I'm saying. This man is not creative. He cannot fly on his own wings so that he has to try to jump down and fly on ours. Whack. Whack. Being black is a magical thing. We create new languages. See, this is what I'm saying. And it's like after we go through the process of creation, creating all of these things, hip and hot ways to say it, hip and hot ways to wear our hair, hip and hot ways. We are the trendsetters for this, for the entire world. Black people are, we are, yes, we are. We are the trendsetters. And you know what? Listen, white men, your wish is our command. I've seen this happen once before. I remember in the 80s, because you know I'm Caribbean American, I remember in the 80s when they used to call us Jamaican booty scratches and all of that. Then by the late 80s, everyone was dancing to reggae music. Everyone was trying to butterfly and bogle and do what they were trying to butterfly. Ah, and they were bogling. And then we had, and then we had, um, we had Patra and we had Shaba. And then we had Super Cat. Some doing a rally back. Super Cat. Chaka Demis and Playa Murder, she wrote. We had all of that. And look at how the, how the tides turned. Now, all of a sudden, there's no shame in being Caribbean anymore. Everybody wants to be Caribbean. Now, when you listen to rap music, all you hear is Caribbean influence throughout it. Listening to the, listen, all you hear, when, when people want to get things spicy and saucy, they want to add a Caribbean flair to a Caribbean beat. Some words that sound like patois. Hmm. 
And now I see it happening again, the African invasion. Listen, oh, you can't stop us. You can't stop us. Your wish is our command. Watch and see. Watch and see, white man. Watch and see. Because right now, if you see, if you pay attention to the trends, we got Davido now making his music and it's on mainstream. We got the African dancers, the Guera Guera coming out. Oh, we rising. We are rising. Oh yes, we are taking over. So yes, so you want to talk about, listen, you know what? I'm in this, I don't, I don't, I don't want to go too far. I don't want to go too far. I don't want to go too far, but I will say this, right? Oh, it's happening. It's happening because when you lack creativity, when you lack ingenuity, when you cannot invent and you're recessive on top of that, you ain't going to make it. You ain't going to make it. So you think that you're mocking us now? Oh, no, baby. No, no. The joke, the joke is on you. Just watch and see what's about to happen. Just watch and see. I see the tides turning already. I see the tides turning and it's like they're punching down, blaming all of this on immigrants and people of color. Look. Look, when you're pilfering and you're robbing, raping, stealing, cannot work any longer because we live in a world economy now. And then you got this payaso, this buffoon in the White House who is, a, who is bringing it even faster into fruition because now China stopped trading with us. Now they're trading with Africa. Listen, oh, the sleeping giant rises. Listen. So listen, if you hear what it is that I'm saying, listen, I'll go. You know what? This is going to be the last thing that I say. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? But I'll say this, right? You all know that I spent a year living inside of my car. I just came out of a year of living in my car from where this book was born. From the, the, the NLP and the affirmations that were born from that stint right there because I came out to Hollywood. I came out to Hollywood looking to be able to break into the industry, but the, the people, the powers that be, the gatekeepers did not want to allow me in. We live in a world economy now, and media is in the hands of the people now. So it's like these gatekeepers are not providing and affording any special opportunities to any black person who hasn't truly, truly, truly earned it, who hasn't put in the stripe, worked twice as hard four times as long. So you all know that I just came out of a year of displacement, living in my car. And it's like this man purporting all of these opportunities for black people, the biggest, the blackest, the loudest, no. No, not unless they're an agent, an agent of the destruction of black people, no. No, you know what? I feel like I have ranted long enough. Thank you very much for listening. Go out there and love one another. But most importantly, what? Love yourself. Love yourself. And part of loving yourself is taking the time to get to know yourself, to affirm yourself. Like with my book, this book of self-love affirmations, the book of affirmations, self-love, like this book. Diving deep into, into yourself and rewriting your subconscious programming because we have so many agents of destruction. We have so many agents of destruction out there, destructors who are out there hoping to be able to demean you, to belittle you, to, to, to take away the little bit of, of self-love that you may have been able to scrape, crimp and garner. Loving yourself is doing what it is that you need to do to undo that programming. Undo that programming. And listen, on that note, I'm going to get out of here. Tanya TKO, and I'm out. Peace.